Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Captain Tommy Skilled, and you are on the lifeboat. Did I hear? I uh, thought I read a moment ago that they are sugaring in uh, in VT. This is the uh, the process uh, from turning the um, the sap that is running in the trees that they capture. Uh, and then boil down to uh, to make maple syrup, the nectar of the gods, the uh, ambrosia from uh, from the northeast, the greatest stuff in the world. Sorry, I'm turning off my ringer because I forget to do this, and then uh, it makes all kinds of noise. Hey there, JD, how are you, my friend? My goodness, JD, you look great. Sometimes it's hard to uh, sometimes it's hard to see, but uh, I'm learning. Hello, SPTV Tattoo Warrior. Great to see you, Brazy Girl. Glad you're here, Tree Hugger. Pruy, ahoy, Melbourne. You know what? I don't know that that is an underrepresented part of Australia here on the lifeboat. Welcome, Melbourne. Glad that you're here. Azure N. Glad you're here. Susie Q. Sometimes you think you'd like to open a sugar house. Love that. You know, what's funny is that up the street from uh, the house that I grew up on, uh, we had a sugar house. It was a massively decrepit old building. It was um, in the process of falling down. Uh, but it was a like a huge... Um, dangerous playground for uh for me and my brother <laughs> the things the uh the, the tetanus shots waiting to happen there but um it was the greatest old barn board you know just it had been there forever but it was always just referred to as the uh adelaide australia nice good to have it it uh yeah it had this perfect perfect barn board the way you know the way that it turns there were always people coming up and taking a few boards off um and the last time i was in vermont it had been completely demolished but i from what i had heard it, that became a um it, it was a matter of safety it literally sat on the road i'm not saying that the way that people use the word inappropriately this thing was on the road <laughs> if you if you came around the corner it was more of a straightaway honestly but if you were a little wide you were going to hit it it was on the road was there any place uh you and your brother played that was safe lady e that really is the correct question isn't it um johnny and i had issues with the whole uh the whole playing safe thing i'd be lying if i told you otherwise we uh we were we were somewhat wild as kids um but you know what i think all kids were wild then deodre gore hears that adelaide is the serial killer capital of australia which means that deodre gore like the rest of us watches entirely too much true crime ASAP, Lizzie, good to see you. Izzy E, good to see you. Daniel Theobald, glad you're here. Dennis the Menace. Dennis the Menace, good to see you. Myers Keeper, boys will be boys. Seventh Son, good to see you. Um, Kristen Marie. Hello, Jennifer Lemke. I hope you're doing well. Getting the little man ready for school. Excellent. A little chilly this morning. We were feral in the 70s. What a great way to put it. <laughs> what a great way to put it. We were feral. We were feral in the 70s. <laughs> Queen of Awkwardness says we were, we were all then feral children. No video games. That's right. I mean, honest to God, we were feral, weren't we? Maple syrup cartels are an issue. Uh, yeah, no, they really are. I remember whilst incarcerated, um, I was talking to a, uh, 
an officer and we were having a discussion about uh, the nectar of the gods. I was explaining uh, that there really is a massive difference between the chemical sludge that uh, Mrs. Butterworth calls maple syrup and the stuff that is made simply by allowing nature to do its job and then boiling it down a little bit. Right? Uh, yeah, so I was uh, I was explaining the um, the difference betwixt the two, uh, be, and this uh, guy said, "Oh man, I got an article you got to see." <laughs> Pardon me, and he pulled up on his computer uh, this thing about a hey, no joke. There was a massive, massive uh, amount of this stuff stolen, and it, it equated basically to two eighteen wheelers full of um, maple syrup. If you start doing the math at what a, uh, you know, what a little bit of maple syrup costs, the idea of stealing two tanker trucks full was, and I thought, that's got to be BS. But no, there really are major, yeah, here we go, DeAndre Dora. There really are major, major maple syrup heists, which I was blown away. But I mean, it, it should make sense. It's the stuff is wildly expensive. It really is. It is $60 a gallon. There you go. Piano uh, mom. See? Got my back. Got my back. Uh, piano mom. You know what? This morning, this is for you. There you go. Hold on. Wah. Let's get that. That's all you, piano mom. I'd appreciate that. That view from behind me. Uh, yeah, a uh, liquid gold is right, $60 a gallon. I mean, if you, if you compare that to, um, if you start to compare that to gasoline, right, or milk, or, I mean, there's not much out there that's $60 a gallon, you know, unless it's made with grapes. <laughs> then it starts getting pretty, uh, pretty expensive. Liquid gold, except it tastes so much better than liquid gold. Ooh. Now, I will have you know that when both of those really great, because um, there's two that I've heard of, uh, the two really fantastic um, heists of, uh, of maple syrup, I was incarcerated for both of those and cannot be uh, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I cannot be uh, accused of stealing the, you know, thousands and tens of thousands of gallons. But if I did, they would not be on the market. I just would have hoarded it. I believe that though that may have been north of the border. Tampa B, good to see you. Shannon Smith, good to see you. It was pretty, uh, there was the look on my face when I found out that uh, JD was female. I'm never right. I'm never right. I was telling um, I was telling her, the Reese, I'm never right. You would think that, in almost 20,000, we're closing in really quickly on 20,000 people. I, you would think that just once I would guess. It's 50-50. It's like throwing a coin up in the air 18,000 times and getting it wrong every time. Um, the odds of that aren't good, but I've managed to do it, which is staggering, but I have. I'm always wrong. Uh, you know what? This is really funny because uh, I, I made such a stink about this. People people inside would, would say, I'm so tired of hearing you talk about this because they um, I used to refer to them as felonious pancakes, uh, you know, or felonious waffles or whatever, because uh, it's it's bad enough that I'm in prison, but it's a felony to, to force somebody to eat that crap with um, that stuff that they use that's not you know what that stuff is excellent for though is making weapons um honestly that caro syrup uh whatever maple syrup that they give you in those little like tubs uh if you take a, a newspaper and you roll it up really tight and then you pour that stuff all over and let it harden eventually you can take that newspaper and um run it through somebody corn syrup that's what it is yeah Thank you, ASAP Lizzie. That's exactly what it is. It's corn syrup. It's just um, like high fructose corn syrup, you know, nastiness. Shag nasty. It is good to see you. 
Du, 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 du. Wow. Wow. One of my patients just gave me a bottle of maple syrup he made. So good, of course. I had pancakes for breakfast today. Uh, I just tend to nip on it as I uh, as I go by. The other thing is that uh, Moscova will make bread um, bread pudding. And there are very few things that taste better with uh, maple syrup on it than bread pudding. Although maple syrup tastes good on everything, including just um, snow. Sugar on snow was always a really, really uh, big thing when I was growing up. The very first snowstorm every year, as the snow started to come out, you just stick a bowl outside and let it start to get filled with snow. And then you would just pour maple syrup all over the top of it and eat it with a spoon. That was a huge, huge thing. Yeah, you stock up while you're in Vermont. It's uh, You're going to do a lot better buying it in Vermont than you're gonna, if you're buying it at uh, like Costco or one of those, you're really going to get killed. But it's just so worth it. No, I've never heard of this. The Maple Tree Inn in New York State. Um, no. Very, very cool name. And I love, you know what? This is, I'm glad that somebody brought this up because I think about this all the time, but I always think about it when I'm not live. Um, there are a lot of people across uh, the fruited plain here in the uh, in our country but around the world that have an image of New York in their head. And the image of New York that they have in their head is Manhattan, right? They have zero perspective on, on the fact that New York as a state is wide the hell open, right? There are way more apple orchards than there are cities. There are way more fields than there are uh, streets. It's... Um, New York is very, very rural. And I don't think that people from around the world get that impression because they see the, the ball dropping, uh, you know, for New Year's. And the, all of the images that you see of New York are massive and there's just wah, cars going by at a million miles an hour. And uh, you always see the images of people uh, like, you know, right around lunch and right around uh, Wall Street, you know, with everybody running up and down the streets. And it's just New York Upstate New York and Vermont and New Hampshire. If you just if you if you if you really honestly you end up on the right street, you wouldn't know what state you were in. You could be in New Hampshire. You could be in fact you could throw Connecticut in there, you could throw Massachusetts in there. There's a lot that really uh looks um starts to look really uh, beautiful. But uh upstate New York is uh is absolutely astoundingly attractive. And Long Island is Long Island's beautiful. Do the right thing. Hit the like button. You know what? I like that. Lady E, do the right thing. Do the right thing. Love the Adirondacks. You know what? I do too. Um, Pennsylvania, all day. Best state, says Jeremy Shelton. The, um, Pennsylvania is a lovely place. It really is. What is the nicest maple syrup? Oh, boy. Can you get arguments out of this, Doc? Now, I'm going to put all of this to bed because you are on the lifeboat. I did forget to hit the like uh, button, actually, but I'm going to fix that. I'm going to go back and fix that. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to put this to bed right now, right here. I'm not going to argue with my Canadian friends because Canadian maple syrup is fantastic. It really is. So I'm not I'm not going to uh, bad mouth that. And I will tell you this too. The, the the maple tree, I don't think, can tell the difference between the Vermont soil, the New Hampshire soil, the Massachusetts soil, and the Canadian soil. Per personally, that's, that's my belief. I will say this, that there are different theories about what makes maple syrup fantastic. And there are a lot of places. Oh, I know Mohawk Valley. I know Mohawk Valley. Okay, the maple syrup that is super, super thin, is more refined, right? So grade A is more refined than grade B, which is more refined than grade C. And you're probably thinking, no one ever sees grade C, right? You don't see grade C or grade B. Well, you're not going to see it in other states, but places where they make it, 
um, you can usually find yourself grade C, grade B, and it's thick. It's way, way, way thicker. I mean, super, super thick. And I happen to be a fan of that. Recently, um, you know, it was the uh, it was the tree hugging Buddhist sent me um, some maple syrup that was uh, Canadian, and it's their grade A that they sell is not fancy. It's just regular grade A. Uh, Vermont, when I was there, that was a big push. They were trying to make it thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. And that's kind of a bummer to me. I kind of like it a little bit thicker. So currently, as much as it pains me, I'm I'm pretty fond of uh, the stuff that's coming out of Canada. Thicker than burnt motor oil. Yeah, like, like I honestly, the... The first time when I was a little kid, I've told this story, but I used to uh, help a guy. Uh, I don't know that you could call it working, but my brother and I would help uh, an, an older gentleman named Dwayne who uh, made maple syrup every year. And we had the buckets. There were none of those wires and tubes and all that. We had buckets and you would go collect the buckets, carry it down to the truck, dump it into the to the milk uh um, jugs that were in the back of this guy's like 1930 something Ford pickup. It was really a, it was very, very much a, uh, it was very much a Vermont uh, thing to do as a kid. You know, it was a, it was a cool gig, but he would make, um, we, we would then fill the up and make it ourselves, you know, light the fires and, and really do it. But the, uh, the stuff that he would make for his, his stack, his head stack, his personal, <laughs> You know, the personal, the not the reg, not the stuff he was selling, but the but his personal was always uh, grade B and grade C. Um, and huge fan. Wow, thank you, Brazzy. The maples, uh, the, the syrup heist was in Quebec, 3,000 tons. That's 21 million Canadian dollars. On of money. Now, uh, that probably could have lasted me a lifetime. It would have been close, but it might have lasted me a lifetime. Ren! Hello, Ren. Do 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 do. Do, 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 do. Are you welcome on this boat? Good, absolutely. Let me tell you how it works. It's fairly simple. The price of admission is that you're nice to everybody here. We don't judge one another. Kind of a cool setup, but we do not judge one another, especially for things that we did whilst under the influence because a lot of people here, not everybody, but a lot of people here are recovering from drugs, alcohol, bad habits, Um Things that we have become addicted to. I don't know where that cat is and it's scaring me because normally that cat. Okay. She's actually being very peaceful right behind me, which is kind of a shocker. But she's uh, she's on the hearth chilling, so I'm okay. I get very nervous when Squirrel's not uh, making sound. You know what I mean? She's like a, um, it's like a two-year-old. You know what I mean? Two-year-olds are, are cool when they're making noise. When they're not making noise, something really bad's happening. We only judge cults and Corey Feldman and a couple of other dirtbags. Yeah, but um, certainly Feldman and, and Feldman, the more you look into Feldman, there's a, there's a lot of dirt on this cat. But I do, I do respect him for the fine work he's done on some uh, films that will always just, uh, you know, be a, a huge part of my, uh, my childhood and, uh, and my youth. Would you ever judge a Caddyshack too loving BG's hater? Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, I could do that. I could. The uh, first of all, here's the thing um, no one truthfully likes Caddyshack too, including the um, I can't think of the actor's name, neither can he, but the guy that played the oh, uh, awful. The, the, the guy that replaced Rodney Dangerfield in the second one, they mini golf and he's got this little, uh, nobody, nobody liked that film. So that's, that's number one. So bad. And uh, as far as Feldman goes, um, 
Feldman really can make me sick in a lot of ways. But the um, the the fascination that I have with Corey Feldman, whether or not we're being punked, whether or not this is the biggest exercise in of spinal tap. And, and you, if you really want to put this in perspective, there is a, a clip of film I saw the other day while doing Corey Feldman dive, where he is with, uh, he's with, um, what's his name? Uh, oh, this is going to drive me nuts. Uh, it was a, he was a comedian. He was in the movie Encino Man. His parents owned, or his mom owned, the comedy store. Uh, Cor no, Corey Haim's not a bad guess, but no. Corey Feldman was with the guy that used to wheeze the juice. What's his name? Come on. Um, someone's going to get it for me. In fact, Pauly Shore, thank you. I saw a thank you ASAP. ASAP got that first, by the way. Uh, I saw a clip of film of him standing with uh i mean of him jamming with Polly shore and Polly shore looks like he's about 16 which means that this facade of this facade of him being a rock star i think johnny scoville said it, uh, funniest when he said it's like this dude went to rock and roll camp but he had the money to stay there <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things that my brother said that honestly just split my side. It's like Corey Feldman went to a uh, rock and roll fantasy camp, but he had the money to stay there. That's kind of honestly what's gone on in this dude's life. Howie Mandel's not a bad guess. You know what? The Lost Boys is a classic. Whatever happened to Polly Shore? Let me tell you something about Polly Shore. You want a prediction? Pauly Shore is going to get nominated for an Academy Award. Now, I I have not seen the film. Fiona, good to see you. Uh, I have not seen the film, but apparently Pauly Shore is uh, playing... Um, uh, da, 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 da. Someone's going to help me with this one, too. Um the uh, gentleman that used to do sweating to the oldies. Remember that guy? He had his own, uh, he had a bunch of Richard Simmons. Thank you. He's going to be, he's playing Richard Simmons. And uh, yeah, he, uh, if he doesn't win an Academy Award, he probably should. Pauly Shore is Richard Simmons is going to blow you away. This is, I have not seen it, right? But I've read so much about it, and they say it is just scary. Scary how much he uh, he becomes um, the character. And uh, good for him, man. I, I, I love a good uh, comeback story. And when it's somebody in Hollywood that, Yeah, JD, right? I th I thought the same thing. Richard Simmons isn't pleased about it. Well, I mean, you know what? You can't I don't think you can control who's going to Am I bothering you, squirrel? Huh? Is my show getting in the way of your relaxation? Or there's nothing worse than when dad has the audacity to not have a basket. Here, would you like to How about right there? You want to sit right there? I'll let you go right next to the microphone. No, she wants no part of that. You just want to be on top of me? Come here. It's like, come here. Yeah, she's on now. She looks really upset. Um, they have a podcast called Where is Richard Simmons? He disappeared. I did not know this. This is true. And please tell me and I'm not being yeah, Richard Simmons is the exercise guy, J9. Please tell me that I'm not being messed with. Did this really happens? So Richard disappeared. Okay, odd. But um, I did see a picture of, um, I saw a picture of, um, I saw a picture of him where he he's in costume, I guess you would say, in character. He's in character. And it's uh, it really is remarkable how much he looks like, um, how much arm workout it's not that bad to keep the arm out it really isn't it's just that she's spoiled oh but she's happy now she's uh she's taken up 
spot on the other side of the uh, the computer, so she's chilling. He disappeared. I'll be damned. Richard Simmons was on General Hospital. Okay, don't mess with me, Valerie. I want to tell you something. I'm got, all right. It's been a long time. It's been enough time. I was addicted to that show. I was wildly addicted to General Hospital when I was a little kid because we got three channels. That was exactly what was on when school was over. So when I got home from school, General Hospital was coming on because I lived in the, in the, on the East Coast. So it was like came off three o'clock or something. And we got out of school at like 2.30. You know what I mean? So you got home and there were three options for what was on television. And that, that was the best of the three options. I watched it every single day. I mean, for years. But I don't remember Richard Simmons being on it. I, I have no memory at all. Unless... Yeah, what the hell did Richard Simmons do? I think you're... Are you playing games with me? Don't play games with me. He played it too toned down, Stacy said. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, it had to have been hard, though. You know, think about this for a second, and I'll get some crap for this, but I don't care. Uh, whether Richard Simmons is uh, is gay or not, truthfully, I don't know. But he sure as hell was effeminate. He he came off like an over the top, you know, kind of a a character. And I think you'd have to. I, I bet it would be scary to play that in, in in today's day and age, because if you come off like you're like you're being disrespectful to the dude. It's the end of your career. It is absolutely the end of your career. You know, if, if that's, you really got to be careful that you don't um, come off looking like you're, uh, like you're being disrespectful to the dude at all. You know, it was a few years ago. I didn't know that either. There were so many rumors about that dude being uh, trapped in his house. Seriously, people thought he was uh, being like locked up by his maid. I, be, I know how do. Oh, you know why? Because I was in prison. Because I was in prison. This is, and I do this a lot. I say stuff like, "Huh? How was that? How do I not know about this?" Ah, well, maybe it was because I was gone for a really, really long time. Um, that may have had something to do with it. We didn't have a lot of internet access inside, but I didn't. I had no idea the dude disappeared. You were addicted to the guiding light. I remember the Luke and Laura saga. He played the exercise instructor at at Luke's disco because Luke did have, they were actually doing exercise crap in Luke's disco at one point. You want to hear something? Is it long? Has this been long enough that we can talk about the Luke and Laura thing? Huh? Because this is 2024. Can we have this conversation? You guys remember this, right? You know how that relationship started? That was a messed up television show, man. That was a really messed up television show. Dark shadows. I used to run home for that, Henny. You met Richard Simmons when I was a guard at the mall. He was 100% Jane. Very cool, Matrix Rabbit. Thank you, Huckleberry. I didn't say it. Huckleberry did. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. Uh, that was really, really a bizarre script. I don't think that script gets written in 2024, right? I really do not think that that script gets written in 2024. Um, yeah, uh, Luke was not not only uh, did did he assault her, but he did it when she was um, a minor. It was. It, I'm telling you, that script would never get made. And then they ended up on the cover of Time Magazine or something like that. The uh, their their marriage was was a massive event on television. Oh yeah, I, I I grew up through all of that crap. That was such a bizarre time to watch television. Elizabeth Taylor was at that wedding, says Matrix Rabbit. Uh, crazy, is that true? I did not know this, but. That would make sense. Honestly, it was an event. It really was. It was either Time Magazine or Newsweek, but one of them. 
one of them had that uh my cat is really now, what do you do like she wants to park on my i'm holding my arm out anyway she wants to get on the wrist the farther out you get the harder that gets kitty shoulder squirrel i know right i do get way more views and way more thumbs up hello brandon when squirrel is in the pigs um Flamboyant. There you go. That's probably a better way to put it. Um, <clears throat> so I want to talk to you about dark shadows. Uh, because the dark shadows thing. Chew does want to climb on me. It's her favorite thing. Uh, how many dark shadows were frightening? Because Johnny Scoville and I talk about this on the regular. I need baskets in every room. I have baskets in every room. I just don't have one on this table. But squirrel is, I don't think you have any idea how spoiled this animal is. I don't think you have any idea how spoiled this animal is. I mean, for real, this is the most spoiled animal on earth. So you had a general hospital followed by dark shadows. Donna, we were, we were somehow in the same place or certainly in the same marketing because that's exactly what I had. It was general hospital followed by dark shadows. My next door neighbor loved dark shadows but liked being scared by it like she was a, a younger girl and, and loved being barnabas collins thank you honey uh how many times though was that show actually scary because johnny and i were talking about it and we're kind of under the uh the it seems to me like there was only one scary episode <laughs> ever <laughs> And the rest of the time, you just sat around being freaked out that it might be the episode that scared you. Am I wrong on this? East Coast Philly market. Okay, well, that makes sense. Honestly, that would make sense. Because the uh, the Northeast market, especially where I was, was so small that... Thank you, Yadira. Thank you much. JD, am I wrong? Are you picking on me? It was one scary episode, wasn't it? Dark Shadows was a bit corny. Okay, but it was it's a bit corny looking back now, right? It wasn't corny when I was a kid. It scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. But looking back at it, I think that there was really only like one scary episode. By the way, if you're going to start bringing up soap operas, right? I, I have admitted, okay? Now, as an ex-convict, this is a hard thing to do, to admit that you were addicted to um, uh, General Hospital. Truthfully, it's not. Uh, a lot of people inside watch, um, like, live for it. Uh, a lot of guys used to get together and watch their soap operas every day in there. Well, I'm not kidding you either. There are a lot of convicts that really watch every... They, if you're trying to kill time, soap operas are great. But I'll tell you why General Hospital was... You can't argue... Thank you. Look, okay, now, Matrix Rabbit starts. Well played, Matrix. But this is only the start. How many rock stars were on that show? The answer is a grip. Somebody Google it. Spikes Calhoun is under the weather. So Jack Wagner, who uh, did the song, All I Need Is Just a Little More Time. Huh? Come on. No one else got that that quick. I didn't see anybody else get that that quick. To be sure of what I need. Remember? Okay. So Jack Wagner was on there. He was a rock star. By the way, really good golfer. I watched him play in a, um, in a pro-am tournament and he qualified. Like he qualified with the pros. Like this dude was, he was a wicked good golfer. Uh, Jack Wagner, rock star, was on that. Rick Springfield, rock star eh, on General Hospital. That's two rock stars, literally. And there was a third. Can you tell me who the third was? Can you tell me who the third was? See, Donna, you're right. The first episode was a bit scary. That is the only reason we kept watching. 
Donna, because the, all there there was never another scary episode. All I need, Shannon. See, I beat you guys to it, though. I beat you to it. Blackie, now, uh, Blackie Parish. I would not have gotten Blackie's last name. Ah, maybe I would have, but still pretty impressive. You know why you don't remember this show in Ireland? I'll tell you why. Because this this show is what we would refer to as trash. I'm sorry. Even the good soap operas are trash. These were these were shows that back in the early days of television were sponsored almost exclusively by companies that made soap. Dove, right, whoever. Um, and they were, and they're filmed in a way that is very unique, right? Um, John Stamos was also on there, well played. I don't know who said that first, but um, John Stamos is not a rock star. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. I didn't say I was a fan, but that dude has played on stage with some pretty big bands, some of the biggest. If you really want to know the truth, sad, but true. And was Ricky Martin really on there? Stamos was on there for a long time. Kevin Smith. <laughs> oh, yes. John Stamos um, was offended. Shannon met John Stamos and he was offended that uh, I didn't recognize him. I felt bad. You never have to feel bad. If you if you meet someone and they, they are offended because you don't recognize them, you're officially allowed to laugh at them. I'm sorry. That's my humble opinion. Like if you meet somebody and they do the, I'm sorry, you don't know who I am, you're allowed to fall down on the ground, right? Like a cartoon character. And then roll around from side to side, grabbing your stomach like it's the funniest thing that you've ever heard. That's my humble opinion on that. Because the fame thing is just silly. One Life to Live. I remember One Life to Live. I don't remember Tom Lee Jones on it, but I'll bet you if I saw a picture, I would, you know? What comedian did the spoof called As the Stomach Turns? I think that would have been uh, uh, Johnny Carson used to do, As the Stomach Turns. Did he not? And he did play with the Beach Boys Cosmic Christie. Thank you. But... That's not the only band he played with on stage. He actually has showed up on a couple of um, of stages uh, and and played. Uh, yes, Blackie Parish. I would not have gotten Parish. I, I, I don't know that I would have got that. He was the lead singer of Jesse and the Rippers. Have mercy! Oh my God! Oh my God! No! No! I'm sorry. In 2000, Ricky Martin was on General Hospital. Okay, well, in 2000, I was a little out of the loop for General Hospital, but is this yet another rock star who was on General Hospital? Live in la vida loca. You know what? It's very brave of you to write that, Kristen, and I'm not going to pick on you solely because of how brave that, that was to write that. No, I, I'm going to be honest with you. That I thought that song was fun, and then it did get worked. But I thought there were a lot of songs like that. F. Murray Abraham once asked me if I knew who he was. Back in my theater management days, we were sold out, and he couldn't get a ticket circa 85. Couldn't stand him ever since. Nice. You know what, mountain girl? <laughs> I at least would have known who he was, though. Uh, what are you doing now, Kat? Um, yeah, he uh, didn't he play? Uh, you know who he played? Yeah. I can't think of it, but oh the brain it's a funny thing 
What were the uh, what was the singing show with bubbles? They danced. Anyone remember? Um, I remember a show with dancing and bubbles. But it was like really, really expensive. And everybody, I think, ended up naked at that particular show. Um, I don't think we're talking about the same thing. Uh, Lawrence Welk, that is what it is. It was the Lawrence Welk show. No, oh my God. No, it was Lawrence Welk, Ani Connie. <laughs> oh, no. My grandparents watched, oh, they were religious about watching that show. Oh, that is so funny. Lawrence Welk. When you when you said goddess, no question. Uh, when when you said that, the Mandrell sisters, I remember them. Um, you know what? They ever. I think everything they they remake these days, like when they take a show and they redo it. They all suck. Personal opinion, you can you don't have to agree with me on this, but I don't think um, that it ever works out. Disney was on first, and then Lawrence Welk. I just remember Lawrence Welk being. Um, uh, you talking about Charlie Murphy? As of last night, Charlie was great. Um, if something happened since then that i don't know about that's terrifying but i hope he's all right he was good guys of yesterday um when we don't see charlie here in the morning very often do you know what charlie does charlie has a, a tough job he has he has a tough gig and he has to uh drive um sometimes long distances uh to do his job uh and he transports people who are no longer uh among the living once they uh, once they check out, he is uh, one of the people that goes and gets them and transports them to where they're go <laughs> going. And it's so it's not a very predictable schedule. You, you know, you never saw he huh? <clears throat> oh, do do I remember? Anyone else remember they made cartoons about musical groups such as Kiss or the Osmonds or the Jackson Five? all being cartoon uh, television heroes absolutely absolutely they did um the one that sticks out to me the most to be sure is uh is kiss brazy girl says bb king played himself on general hospital during some nightclub scenes well then does anyone want to argue with me that General Hospital had more rock stars on it than anyone else? Is there anyone that wants to play that game with me? Eh. That's what I thought. Uh, I'm sorry, but... Yeah, the Monkees the monkeys were already a fake band just to start with, weren't they? I mean, they were, they were engineered. Uh, Josie and the Pussycats. Big fan. Uh... Jennifer, are you bummed out that I'm that I have a, a, a bridge behind me instead of the uh, instead of my uh, Captain Kirk shirt? Actually, I know Stacy Allen. Do you know who I am, Stacy Allen, or are you just playing games with me? Because everybody knows, everybody knows that Tommy circles the drain as soon as ever. If you if you begin to start talking about HR puff and stuff. Where to go when things get rough? I, it's it is one of those instant things that can absolutely, like I'm down the rabbit hole and stuff. That's it. HR puff and stuff for me is that thing. Um, Land of the Lost was huge. I watched a lot of Land of the Lost, but HR puff and stuff. When I was a little kid, I mean, I was a yeah. Witchy poo scared the crap out of me. Matrix. I don't know about you, but Witchy poo scared the crap out of me. I was a little little kid, or. Uh, that would be Sid and Marty Croft was uh, the um, – Sid and Marty Croft smoked a lot of weed. There's no doubt in my mind. They probably did some fungus and a little bit of acid as well. But they uh, they had this very psychedelic 
uh, feel to everything they did. I feel like they were making they were making really trippy stuff for themselves, and they were selling it off as kids uh, as kids shows. And uh, you still have VHS of Witchy Poo. Tampa, there's Tampa B and I. There's a uh, there's a synergy there. There's just something. So she gets me. There's something there. Uh, but as a little kid, no joke. Like um, Witchy Poo scared the crap out of me. I'm not joking. I had a uh, but I loved everything else about that show, and I think that was the magic behind. Uh, I think the magic behind that show was that the flute, right? Uh, Jimmy's magic flute was, um, there was so much, there were so many characters in that puff and stuff. The, uh, you know, the sheriff that were so cool that you stuck around, like really groove into it. And then she'd be on that magic, uh, broom, which uh, had a gear shifter. <laughs> her, her broom had a gear shifter, which is really awesome. But, uh, that was Tommy Bird says, I missed the boat. What is happening here? Uh, well, it's it's a hump day, so we're we're uh, we're talking about absolutely nothing here this morning. But uh, we got on to HR Puffin stuff. Um, Sid and Marty Croft and their uh, their attempt at pushing their drug uh, culture onto uh, small children, which I'm sure has nothing to do with anything that uh, that went wrong with any of us. The memory hole of uh, the rabbit hole called memory lane. That's that's probably a good way to put it. Water shipped down scared the crap out of me. Yeah, you know what, ASAP? Gotcha. If you know, if you've never seen that, that's another one that was tough. Captain Caveman was fun to watch. Captain Caveman. Oh, you know what? <clears throat> this is I hope someone we talked about this on here once before. <clears throat> Tumble dry. This is something that you obviously know. These are things we're, we're, we're getting into areas that nobody knows anything about. And for that reason, we, we, we're going to we're going to plow some new uh, some new ground here. First of all, Pepe Le Pew. You can't make Pepe Le Pew. You, you could not even, you know, the. In this uh, in this day, you could not make it, in spite of the fact that it is a uh, a skunk and a, a cat. I assure you that, that that simply could not be made. Now, this this is the cruelest thing, right, on planet Earth. The Velveteen Rabbit is the cruelest thing on planet Earth because when you're a child, the first time somebody reads you the Velveteen Rabbit, it means nothing to you, right? But you'll realize that it means a bunch to the person who's reading it to you. Like, I remember distinctly being a child and not understanding why the book that they were reading me was wrecking them. <laughs> like, they were really having a struggle with this. And when um, Spanky was a little boy, uh, I got the Velveteen Rabbit mailed to me. And then I read my kid the book. And the, the, the cycle shifts, right? And I remember Spanky looking up at me like, I don't know why this is kicking the hell out of the old man, but it seems to be kicking the hell out of the old man, you know? Uh, I, don't even, uh, I don't even know that I like the, uh, I don't even know that I like reading it. I mean, reading the name Velveteen Rabbit, that, that's a, what a god-awful story. It's, I mean, it's a beautiful story, but what a god-awful story. The Secret of Nim. I... Or did you say okay? Did you watch this or read it? Because I've never seen The Secret of Nim, but I remember reading all of those and really being into them. Hong Kong Fui. Hong Kong Fui. Number one super guy. Hong Kong Fui. Quicker than the human. Eye. Uh I was a huge Buck Rogers fan too. 
Pepe Le Pew would offend someone. Absolutely, Pepe Le Pew would offend. And then look, I understand why Pepe Le Pew would be offending, offensive. I really do. Um, but I think I think as a society, we uh, I think as a society, we need a, we need we need a good dose of perspective. And here's what I mean by that. Before anybody starts getting all angry, but here's what I mean by that. If if you go back. 350 years or 400 years which in the in the space of humanity is right but 400 years ago um we i'm sorry rumple still skin story still haunts my dream still rumple still skin that's the uh the the golden hair yeah This is we need we need to uh, to talk about this because this is absolutely fascinating. Truthfully, take some time someday and look up all of the characters that uh, were done and voiced by uh, Mel Blanc, because all of them are based on something. Right. So like Foghorn, Leghorn and all, all of the characters that he did were based on people he knew were based on. And there are stories behind all of them and they are funny as hell and worth doing a bit of a deep dive on. And I think we, we tend to forget that um, all those cartoons and stuff kind of the if you've ever seen um, Seth. Uh, McFarlane when he starts doing all the different voices from family uh, uh, from family guy at once it, there's something very funny about that right Mel Blanc was doing that 50 years before that dude was born and he was doing it with like five times more voices right he was all of the Warner Brothers cartoons he was every single voice but he used to go on Johnny Carson he would slay Carson by doing you know all of the voices this is the kind of the way that that uh, Seth McFarlane does it now absolutely worth watching going and watching it it's just those old clips are are magic they really are where the red fern grow any of those really tough ones i read all all of that stuff elmer fudd bugs bunny the road runner uh elmer fudd wears no pants right am i correct Elmer's has never had on a pair of pants. No one's ever brought that up either. You know, why is Elmer Fudd uh, Daffy Duck? Once again, not fond of pants. What was it about Disney that? Is he? I loved the secret of Nim. I don't know. Maybe I was, maybe I was, uh, maybe I'm busted too. I don't know. I don't know. Oh no, Cosmic Christie, you're right. You're right. There's a lot of really dark crap. Um, <laughs> you blame Winnie the Pooh for starting the pants free movement. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, that's funny as heck. Yes, yeah, Banky, we're all hoping you're feeling better, son. Oh, here, Johnny son. People don't even like pants. Uh I'm uh I'm not a huge fan. I I, I think most people would rather um would rather full Porky Pig it, I think. Uh, but, you know, people do. Uh, I just mentioned this morning that you were sick, Calhoun. Nobody assumes that you're mentioned that, that you're sick. Uh, driving through Essex, Vermont, headed to Walmart, listening in. The fact that there is a Walmart in Vermont blows my mind. Truthfully and honestly, uh, that blows my mind. But I remember being... I remember a day where you could not have uh, golden arches anywhere in the state of Vermont. 
Like you could not, you were not allowed to put up McDonald's golden arches. They have Mickey D's in Vermont. They just don't have any golden arches. So you drive right by it and you go like this. What the hell was that? Was that a McDonald's? Because <laughs> they don't have signs and things like that. It's crazy. The older I get, the less I like to wear. And I, I, I kind of get that. Jennifer Folsom says, that's right. Elastic is our friend. Nothing's wrong with elastic. Let's not, let's not uh, pick on elastic. Uh, there's nothing wrong with elastic. Calhoun's gaining weight. He should be. That's a good thing. Pepe Le Pew, Tweety Bird, Sylvester, Porky Pig. You're right. There's a, there's not a lot of uh, – perhaps it was just a lot easier not drawing pants. I mean, they 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 didn't go to a store and buy this stuff. They did have to actually draw the, the pants, and they would have to then draw it on every single uh, frame. They probably just went, ah, you know what? Skip the pants. Man, we don't even need to give them junk. <laughs> right? We'll just, we'll just give them that we'll kind of smooth everything out down there and uh, – had him on his can and sent him on his way. Um, the compilation books. It's a time saver, says Jennifer Folsom. Yeah, no question, right? The lack of pants took your mind off the speech impediments. That genius. Genius. Huckleberry uh, Calhoun, so you're right. Uh, it's it's fantastic because I I honestly did not know notice all of the speech impediments. Hey Roscoe's mom. Thoughts and prayers with you. And we're happy to have you here, right? Um, you're going to uh, you're going to come back and tell us that you're uh, you're lurking and that things went fantastic. Um, I will be doing that again tomorrow for you. God bless. Less laundry. Poor poo. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of room. Um, Jennifer Folsom says, since nakedness is on topic, has anyone been to a nudist camp? He, he leads me to believe that Jennifer has attended a nudist camp. This is a question asked by people who have already attended uh, a nudist camp. It's okay. We're not judging you, Jennifer. Um, I absolutely walked across. Um, I uh, walked across one by accident. I'm not kidding. And it really was an accident. I remember uh, I was a good three quarters of the way um, across it before I went, holy hell, I'm the only person here wearing anything. Um, I'm a fan of, uh, I'm a fan of a little bit of fabric though. Uh, a little bit of fabric, a little bit of, uh, uh, yeah, a little bit of fabric. Yeah, been at, by accident, been on a nudist beach. Yep. J9 says, Spanx, get a water jug with a filter. Uh, good, Probably a good solid piece of advice. Was this in Texas near Porter? Pajama Pixie, I know exactly where you're talking about. I know exactly where you're talking about. I do. I do. JD, I'm a fan of as yeah, a little imagination is not such a bad thing. It's really not such a bad thing. Nothing wrong with a little bit of fabric. Nothing wrong with a little bit of fabric. Miss D says I blinded people. I'm I'm you, when you see me next to uh, to Johnny because Johnny's outside a lot. He's getting really really tan. I, uh, um, I will in the summer, but. In France, just lots of nude swimmers. Um, well, swimming is a, a sport that's probably a lot more fun with a lot less fabric. It's just a humble opinion on that one. That's a, that's a, I'm a fan of fabric, but uh, that's a sport you could probably uh, 
Uh, mm -hmm. The less fabric, the better on that one. Danger Mouse was my cartoon. Nice. I, you know, I, there were so few cartoons I didn't like. And I know that this is cliche as hell, but I couldn't stand Scrappy Doo. Other than that, there wasn't really much I didn't like. And, and that's all I have to say about that. It's Wednesday, people. Get out there and tear the lid off it. Make it a hell of a day, huh? It's going to be a good one. Only if you decide to make it a good one. Oh, Johnny Quest. If you knew, Spanx Calhoun did not miss. There is not a Johnny Quest. Original Johnny Quest or re, re pop second Johnny Quest that Spanx Calhoun has not seen nine times. That he has not seen nine times. That was a, that was a thing between father and son with uh, me and Spanky. He uh, he took to Johnny Quest like the first time that he saw it, and I thought. Score. I love Johnny Quest. Like I, now, I can sit down and watch cartoons with my kid, and not be bummed out at all, right? Like I don't feel like, like I'm having to sacrifice in any way. And then he turned out to be a huge Scooby Doo fan, right? I uh, I never tried to uh, push cartoons on my kid. I think cartoons must be a very personal thing. So my uh, my son was a big Scooby Doo fan. He was also a massive Johnny Quest fan. So it was uh, it was pretty easy watching you know, cartoons with my kid. Rocky and Bullwinkle, huge fan. Huge fan. Huge fan of Rocky and Bullwinkle. If I were to get another kitty ever, it would definitely be called Bullwinkle. I would have Rocket J Squirrel and I would have uh, Bullwinkle. Danny's mom. Danny's mom was not a fan of Speed Racer. Didn't see that coming. I love Speed Racer. Go Speed Racer. Go Speed Racer. In the Mach 5? You know, I love the Mach 5. You know, I think, though, that that was definitely a guy's uh, thing. Roscoe's mom, says Stacy Sullivan. Um, I had breast cancer in uh, 2012. I'm here for you and will be praying that you have a safe, successful surgery. Much love, my friend. And you know what? Totally do right. Um, I'm going to leave that one up right there because I think that that's probably a really good one to to, uh, to leave up. Nothing wrong with Danger Mouse. Nothing wrong with Danger Mouse. He-Man and Battle Cat. Okay. You know what? Honestly, I can, I can, my memory, I can age all of you by the things that you say that you, uh, that what you were really into watching. Valerie Nagy says, Speed Racer fan here, and I'm a girl. I know, well, you know what? I Well, I know that there were definitely Speed Racer fans that were girls, but I don't think that there were too many Speed Racer fans that did not. I mean, I don't think that there were too many boys that were not a fan of Speed Racer. Speed Racer. Fans. Yeah, I loved Speed Racer. I really did. I, uh, I was... I, I I wouldn't even mind like I love the Mach Five. I would I wouldn't mind. I got a, a, a custom license plate yesterday. Mach Five would have been a great custom license plate. But instead, I went with something from the lifeboat. But I'm gonna wait and show you a photo. But I got a lifeboat. Uh, I got a lifeboat style license plate. So yeah, yeah. Donna says I got you beat on the age thing. Ah, simply a number. Simply a number. That's all it is. Ninja Turtles. Um, oh yeah, Calhouni and his his generation. I, you know, I was I'm, I'm a little uh, old, right, for the Ninja Turtle, but my kid, I mean, that was like his his um his cousins, right? And uh because that heroes in a half shell so about four years or five years really before my uh, my son is when uh, they really started like to, to but that was his oldest cousin is about four or five years older than him so it was perfect yeah. uh spanky was super big into the uh the gargoyles it was a big 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 thing all right i better get to work people i got stuff i got to do the beatles cartoon there you go yellow submarine was a particularly good one i remember uh i remember those underdog yeah if you don't like underdog i don't want to be your friend I'm sorry. Just said it. I said it. I don't like underdog. I don't want to be your friend. I'm Captain Tommy Scoville.
I'll see you guys on the next one. All right? Be good.